Hi, uh, my name's Scott Webster. I come from Australia, but reside in Gothenburg in Sweden. I'm one of the head coaches and teachers for 21st Century PT School. Uh, my areas of expertise that I'll be teaching is in anatomy, physiology and massage. My background in Australia was uh, very much involved in sporting environments. Uh, I played a high level of Australian rules football. I also swum at quite a high level and played minor sports such as cricket and a lot of beach activities. Uh, we developed ourselves in a way that focuses on uh, movement uh, of many various kinds and this focus led me towards my passion now which is in manual therapy. I have two clinics here in Gothenburg and I practice a lot of manual techniques including uh, osteopathic techniques, deep tissue sports massage and active facilitation of muscles. Uh, the areas that I'll be teaching with you is in terms of how the body is connected through its muscles, fascia and the joints and how that relates to the movement uh, when you'll be doing your PT side. The muscles themselves uh, have a connective tissue that runs through which is fascia. This is a more uh, well-known issue these days however it's still very young in its application. Uh, over the number of years that I've been doing uh, release techniques, uh, especially with the fascia, uh, well, I've developed a number of my own styles and techniques that I'll be passing on to you in order to get quick and good results with your clients and then you'll be able to also show the connection of those areas and move it in towards their movement patterns. The body must be seen as a whole and can't just be looked at in sections. Uh, the entire body is connected through this fascia and therefore issues in lower back or issues in up the upper back can easily start with the feet or start with the hamstrings. Uh, this is a part of the course in terms of oh, the overarching view of the wholeness of understanding your nutritional side, your PT side and your recovery side, which is massage. Mitt namn är Daniel. Efter att ha jobbat i flera år inom restaurang och lager så kände jag att jag ville göra någonting annorlunda med mitt liv. Det ledde till att jag började studera kostvetenskap vid Göteborgs universitet, varifrån jag även har en kandidatexamen. Till vardags har jag under de senaste åren jobbat med livstidsförändring, coaching och kostrådgivning. Och det jag brinner för det är just förändringen. Att se ljuset gå upp i ögonen hos någon som har gjort en förändring när något klickar. Hos 21st Century PT School så är det jag som håller i kostdelen. Vi fokuserar inte bara på näringen och molekyluppbyggnaden utan även på helheten som är så viktig för att någon ska hålla en viss kost och hålla sig hälsosamma så länge som möjligt. Så om mig får man lära sig alltihopa från molekyluppbyggnad upp till hur man sätter ihop en trevlig måltid. Ola Kjellman Almeida heter jag och har lite drygt 15 år chefordenhet som personlig tränare. Fystränare och personlig tränare ska jag väl tillägga. Kommer att eh, jobba som lärare på eh, utbildningen här i eh, vår. Kommer ha hand om eh, först och främst eh, träningsrelaterade ämnena. Eh, en hel del eh, lyftningsteknik och eh, biomekanik och ett par andra bitar. Saker som jag tycker är väldigt intressant själv och, och har studerat eh, väldigt mycket de senaste åren. Så att, eh, det ska bli väldigt roligt. Jag har själv en träningsbakgrund inom kampsport en hel del. Jag tränar en del fortfarande, men idag blir det mest styrketräning. Så, ja, det är de bitarna jag kommer ta hand om på utbildningen. Jag kommer även prata en del om sälj och, och rollen som tränare. Då jag, ja, har som bekant en ganska mycket erfarenhet där så uh, kommer vi prata lite grann om det. Prata lite grann om vad uh, jag har gjort för misstag och vilka misstag som ni kanske kan uh, undvika då genom att um, lyssna på mina föreläsningar. 
Welcome to 21st Century Personal Training School. My name is David Samuel and I'm one of the teachers on 21st Century Personal Training School. I'm from London, England and I have been in the sport, health and fitness industry for 30 years. I started in, in 1989 as a gym instructor, a group training instructor. So over these last 30 years I've, I've really um, developed myself and educated myself to be able to work in, work in different areas so in the sports world, in the fitness world, and now what we call the health and fitness industry, as a, as a, as a trainer, as a coach, as a, as a lecturer, as a teacher, as a masseur, um, working a lot with, with uh, individuals as well as with groups of people. I've worked in over 10 countries in this world uh, as a trainer, as a lecturer, as a teacher. I've been part of the education process of over 7,000 trainers who work worldwide. So. I've been taught myself by some of the best teachers and coaches in the world and I've had the privilege of training with some of the best athletes in the world. So I'm bringing a lot of experience and knowledge into this school and combined with my colleagues, I think that we have, we have, we have a really strong educational teaching team. Uh, basically these guys are some of the best guys that I've ever worked with in these 30 years. Uh, so I'm really privileged to work with them and I know that we're going to deliver a fantastic course to you guys that join us. The industry today really needs quality trainers um, and I think that's what we bring. We bring in our experience, we bring in our knowledge, we bring in our passion and we bring in our expertise. Every one of us has, has a core uh, skill set which we have combined to produce a great education, uh, 21st century education for a 21st century personal trainer. The subjects I would teach will mainly consist of strength and conditioning, fitness testing, uh, leadership, mental training, the, the, the psychology behind what it takes to be a personal trainer in terms that, by that I mean the, per the personal trainer's roles that they play today. I work with, uh, I'll teach marketing, uh, sales, entrepreneurship, so you also learn the business side of it all and be equipped to not only work as a PT who wants to go and work for, for a gym chain but also to start your own business, which I think is the is, is optimal, optimum that a personal trainer should be looking at, is to take control of their own product and work for themselves and build a brand for themselves. We'll teach you all about this, about building a brand, brand awareness. All this will come with inside the course that you learn. So you're not, you'll get the theoretical knowledge, you'll get the practical knowledge, so when you leave us, you'll be fully equipped to deliver uh, excellent results to your clients and also to build a great business for, for yourself and become successful. I mean, our, our slogan is your success is our motivation. So we are motivated to make you successful. That's the number one goal that we have with our school. Uh, so really, I mean, I have to be, be pretty precise here. Everyone is welcome to, to uh, apply and attend our school. Everyone is welcome. But we really want to have people that really want to become trainers, that really want to make a difference in people's lives. So, when you, so that when you come to the school, you've done your prep work because you'll get some material to study before you come to the course. That when you are on the course, that you're on time, that you're really focused, that you're really committed and dedicated, that you, you do your homework after the lectures, you know, that you're, you're, not, you're not late for class, that you're really committed so that we can build a good, a good class, so that there's harmony in the class. We always recommend that you have done some training before, so you're not coming to us with no training experience. And also that if you have any issues, you, you know, for example, you might be dyslectic or you might be, uh, you know, have some, some issues, that you let us know before you come to the course so that we can be fully uh, helpful to you. So when you come to the course, you know, you, you don't get left behind because it is, it is an intensive course. It's over three weeks. So if you have any questions or, or you have any queries, you know, just please contact, contact us on the email that will appear or the phone number that will appear at the end of this, uh, this program. And uh, we really look forward to seeing you. How was your, how was your CrossFit pass uh, last time, man? Was it good? It was really good. I did one this morning, actually. You did, yeah? All right, all right. Trying all right. to focus more on the conditioning part. Okay. And um, was, it, was, it, was it good? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Actually, it did. Uh, yeah. it, it's astonishing how quickly your conditioning gets better mm. when you actually do it. Mm. Was it 20, uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes? Oh, we did uh, intervals, four minute intervals. Okay, all right, all right. Wait, which exercises? 
Uh, we did some uh, air bike, uh -huh. some rowing, some snatches, and body uh, weight. I mean, lifting. Yeah, sixty percent body weight or no, no snatches, no. kettlebell snatches, man. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, kettlebell okay. snatches for four minutes. All right, all right. Ooh, Twenty kilos. Okay, and then some ball balls and some burpees. Okay, all right, Jeez. all right. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Unbroken or broken? Uh, methodically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I always find uh, yeah you, you set a number. Three breaths, seven exactly. Number, three mm. breaths. Hmm. Always seems to. That crossfit thing is still tough, man. It's gonna be getting tougher. But are, are more people coming into it, or is it like less people dropping off? More and more people coming into it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So the trend is still still building. Yes. Until, yeah. All right. It yeah. is all right, all right. actually. I know yeah. you guys are pretty pretty hard on crossfit. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Are you into uh, it? Not really. No. no not really. No. Not these days. Really. <coughs> I, I used to do it a lot. I um, used to train a lot of martial arts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Back in the days, and then uh, yeah, that's how I got introduced to it actually okay. by um, uh, the guys at Fighter Center. Uh, they mm -hmm. had uh, CrossFit as their uh, conditioning. Okay. okay. Um, right. So yeah. we always did a little fifteen uh, minute uh, workout in the end, mm -hmm. and they kind of scaled it depending on. Uh, what it was, so they followed the the main uh, American uh, oh, website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, that was that was fun. But um, these days, not really, not yeah. that much. It's uh, I have a little bit of a problem with the 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 way CrossFit uh, or being you know applied. Um, I love the the the, the whole. Concept, uh, yeah, concept, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and if you read the 100 Words of Fitness by Glassman, it's perfect. It's just the way I, I wanted it to be, but mm. the execution. The, yeah, the execution <coughs> in real life, uh, mm, I, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. when you, I come from a, a background of, of, of uh, you know, uh, performance training, and if, if you want to be good at something, you have to do it in a good way, mm. you know. That's right. There's uh, too much emphasis <coughs> on that quick movement, yeah. as many as you can without the right base. I exactly. mean, if, you, if, you, if you're coming from a professional background, whether yeah. it's you know, sprinting or, or fighting or something that you've been doing for years, yeah. then sure, you've most likely got that base that you need. Yeah. But then, let's face it, most of society <laughs> doesn't sure. come from no. that background. Yeah, yeah. So, from. And then as you get the numbers in, you know, the, the coaches are generally, you know, you know, at least amateurs in some form or another mm -hmm. of themselves. Mm -hmm. But do they have the uh, ability to apply that to those who aren't amateurs? Who well, this to be works. honest, to be the defender. Then <laughs> of course, <laughs> I, guess. Uh, I went to another uh, one of the biggest gyms in Gothenburg the other day because mm. I had some back issues and wanted to do some exercises in machines, mm -hmm. which we have none. Um, and I was surprised how many people in the gym had really poor form right really did <laughs> everything <laughs> really badly yeah, yeah. and considering yeah. how much actual technique training we do in the crossfit gym if you do the classes and stuff okay if you go and do crossfit on your own and you don't do technique training and stuff of yeah. course you're gonna have bad form but if you look at a class in general a majority if not all of the people will have decent if not good technique considering when i went to the gym and i saw eight out of ten people mm. doing things Quite badly, right? Like yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah that's, even, that's, that's, even on the that's very true. That's yes, that's very exactly. true. <coughs> machines and free weights, people did mm, mm. not the best of form, and that's an issue I think in the gym world in general is people don't emphasize the, the importance of yeah. doing things mm. correctly mm. enough. Do you think that's why this the whole functional movement uh, push has come because uh, there's been a bit of a gap? Yeah, I, uh, maybe. I think the success of CrossFit is two things. One is the yeah the functional movements and uh, the variation. You don't, for me, anyways. One of the reasons I do it is because I don't really like the whole. I do my sets and then I rest and then I do my sets and then I rest. it's not my type of uh, right. my type of training. Mm. And also is the community. Mm. Okay. If you come from mm. like a background like playing team sports or being uh, into martial arts, you have like a community in your. Uh, mm. your club and then when you stop with your football or with your lacrosse or whatever it can be you often lose that uh, community feeling but in a crossfit it's like gym training but in a team mm. yeah. Yeah. Right. True. Yeah. that's yeah. what's attractive right. yeah, that's yeah it attracts a lot of uh, former uh, team team uh, yes. players mm. and stuff uh, of course yeah, mm. yeah it's, um, no most definitely what type of martial arts did you do 
I did uh, Thai boxing mostly. Okay. When I was younger, I did a lot of Thai boxing, and then um, in a little bit older age, I uh, did some wrestling, uh, which I kind of I do once every now and then uh, these days as well. I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have that much time. But mm. uh, I love the wrestling since the wrestling uh, uh, makes me I, I can I can go for almost a hundred percent without you know injure myself or my uh, component. Uh, if you um, if you do stand up uh, more like striking fighting, it's uh, the possibility of injury or, yes. or way higher. And, uh, and so, uh, and I never did any wrestling when I was younger, um, not a, none, none whatsoever. So it was totally new for me about ten years ago, uh, and I really like it, really mm. like it. So I wish I had more time. I would uh, I would spend a lot more time doing it. But it's super impressive <coughs> the type of strength wrestlers have. Super, Incredible. super and athletes. Also on, uh, I mean, uh, training mm -hmm. with. Uh, do you know who Musa Hasevali is? Oh yeah, yeah, I know him very, very well. Yeah, tiny, tiny guy. Oh. Super strong. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Insane. Super, super. I see a real, a good, good wrestler. I, I used to work um, with a, a, a former Roman uh, um, wrestler, and pff, yeah, these athletes are just phenomenal. If you. Uh, it all essentially comes from within, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, kind of, you know. But uh, if you if you look at, at a wrestler, I, I don't, I don't, I can't see that you can find a, a one athlete that is as complete as an athlete as a wrestler. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you if you see a, 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 how about, how about a, a an explosive athlete, they're explosive. You know, they're strong, <coughs> they're they're fast or whatever. But yeah. their stamina might not be all that, mm -hmm. and uh, and their general uh, fitness mm. are not maybe not that good but a wrestler his general fitness are just amazing you know? but how about how about a gymnast a yeah gymnast as well but you can see that maybe the the gymnasts they have a little bit of lack of s leg strength uh, mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. of the time if you look at the male gymnast they mm -hmm. they uh, they have a huge upper body since they do in rings and, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and everything right uh, but I think a, a, a if you look at a real good wrestler mm -hmm. <coughs> You remember the guy uh, Martin Lid uh, Barry? Yeah, 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 yeah. When he was on top, he had a um, he had a little uh, measure that he did mm -hmm. for himself. I was he went to the gym and and if you want to uh, look at his his uh, fitness for the day, uh, he wanted to to go to do a, a three times body weight deadlift. Directly after that, do a backflip, and then run uh, ten kilometers under forty minutes. That's pretty good. That's mm. pretty good. I mean, none of it are really like super so level. No, but no, 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 I no, mean, no, the yeah. guys that can deadlift yeah, yeah, three times their body weight, <laughs> yeah. they're not running fast. No, <laughs> no, 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 they're not, no, usually no, no. they're not running at all. No, you know, exactly. they're standing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And vice versa, the ones yeah. that, that run yeah, yeah, yeah. run uh, ten kilometers uh, or half an hour, I mean, they're not so muscular usually, right? They 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 don't even deadlift. I mean, throw them in the pool for two kilometers, and you'd have all four muscle contractions covered. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, amazing. yeah, and he, uh, yeah. And, and between he do a backflip. I mean, most uh, <laughs> there, there's not many adults to do a backflip. <laughs> 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 not without a few beers, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, I think that's the, that's the thing. Yeah. I think it's pretty pretty amazing when you look at what the body can actually do. Oh you yeah. Know what I mean, it's uh, it's, it's insane when you look at the limit. Yeah, yeah, uh, look at, at yeah. our, our, in our world, then the cross. If, if you look at the top people in the world, mm. or even just in Gothenburg. Mm. Mm. It's super impressive mm. the things oh. people can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah that's true. That's but what, one thing that one thing that was uh, that I was actually pretty surprised about, you know, in a way, was when I was, I was watching one documentary, and they were saying how um, that drug testing was now in CrossFit. I was like, mm. why? Mm. But then obviously when I was looking at the doc looking into the documentary, mm. how competitive it now is as a mm. sport, mm. then you obviously you can understand yeah, why. Super competitive. Yeah. Mm. Now drugs have come into CrossFit, so the test. I think a couple of guys who got medals or come or no, placed. Mm. Were, yeah, the were tested positive. Uh, yeah, Aussie guy, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, that, that got uh, convicted, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he lost his yeah, I mean, second place. <coughs> it's quite. Uh, it's quite common now, then. Yeah, it? I, I guess. I mean, if, if you look <coughs> at, at the level sport, anyway. it's. Um, yeah. Well, there's, it could, there's, there's, there's a benefit. Tested, you know, tested, hell of a lot of yeah. money, mm. sponsorship. Yeah, exactly. And the way do you perform the the sport? It's. It's quite obvious that you could uh, uh, oh, yeah. um, make mm. some gains from uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Especially yeah. since we do uh, the competitions are over several events over several days. Yeah. So if they can so shorten the recovery, their recovery yeah, time, yeah. of course, mm. of course. They have a big benefit. Yeah. Of course, of course. That's yeah. why drug testing is super important. Yeah. No, definitely. Well, what's, what's the latest? What's the latest nutrition trend? 
Latest nutrition. Oh, there's yeah. a few going around. Uh, uh, I heard uh, a blogger doing the carnivore diet now. Okay, what's that one? Only eat meat. Only eat meat. Yes. Mm. Carnival diet. Ca ca carnival. Carnival. Diet. Oh, oh, carnival. Okay. Just so meat. it's like uh, paleo, but uh, uh, one step further. It's <laughs> <laughs> quite a few of them. Uh, only, okay. only meat, nothing else. Okay. What's, what's, and what's there's some the people doing only raw meat as well. What's the benefit of that? What's the disadvantage? I mean, from a nutritionist pers perspective. Uh, what about fibers? Huh? Uh, yeah, the benefits, I guess, is you eat clean. Okay. <laughs> and you get a lot of iron. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you eat clean meat. Okay. And if you clean meat, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the down part is you don't eat anything else. Mm -hmm. so, so, it's not, so, so it's not balanced then? It's not balanced, obviously, then? In that case. Immediately lack of fiber? Yeah, lack of fiber, lack of vitamins, lack mm. of uh, a lot of several minerals. Mm. The issue with diets in general is that they're too narrow. Mm. A diet, your diet should always be as complete as possible. Mm. And most of the trendy diets, mm. uh, the lack some part. Mm. They take something else, something out. But who's who's doing this kind of diet you just talked about? I mean, who's who's doing it? Is it people in the sports world, people in the fitness world, general people? Fitness world. Fitness world. Okay. Mostly, world. like okay. if you have a big name in the fitness world. All right. And also, pe some people do extreme things to get a following. Right. Mm. Right. And even right. if you don't really think that right. carnivore diet or whatever <laughs> is really good, then you'll do it for a few weeks, get right. a lot of eyes on you, and then you can switch your focus. Okay. I, I've heard of uh, a number of people with uh, complications with their stomach and digestion, uh, and possibly even skin, skin issues, autoimmune issues, that uh, they go on these minimal minimalistic diets, for example, carnivore diet, to then eradicate all, all other foods except for the most basic one that doesn't affect them. Mm. And then very slowly adding yes. in. This is a system called food map. Oh, mm. Especially if you have um, problems with the intestine, mm -hmm. uh, then you do food map. You exclude everything that might might cause an issue, and then you slowly in, uh, reintroduce. Re reintroduce so over what time do you do that? Is it one, two months, or six Over months? a few months. Yeah. Slight. You have to do it slowly, because first you have to take everything out, and then you also have to realize that Things, certain things like some minerals and some mm. uh, actually some proteins and stuff as well stays in the body for some time. Mm. So if you go from eating pretty much a, a wholesome diet and then you go on an extreme diet for the first maybe week or so, you're gonna, yeah, you're of course you're gonna feel fine because yeah. you're mm. gonna have fat, residues fat from soluble. exactly. Yeah. You're gonna have a lot of things still in your body. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, the the one trend I think right now. Intermediate uh, fasting. Still mm -hmm. quite popular. Still quite popular, yeah. yeah. I think uh, something interesting for you on the running, because you're professional running, is mm. that over the over the decades, uh, you know, 1980s, 90s, 2000s yeah. now, I mean, we, of course we've seen times get better and better. Yeah. But a lot of those times, whether it's running, swimming, CrossFit even, mm. is sort of contributed to a lot of the technology that we mm. use. Mm. I mean, your diet when you were professional? Yeah, I mean... Some, it, as much focus as now? Or? Uh, no, less focus now. Less focus now on obviously eating exactly right at mm. the right times because they're not training as hard as what I used to train. Yeah. So of course you, yeah. yeah, you deviate from what your rigid schedule was at that time. But I mean, pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much the same. I yeah. mean, I, I haven't uh, haven't increased so much in weight. Still yeah. managed to retain more or the same amount of body fat. Maybe a few few percent is higher. So yeah. more more or the same. Yeah. More or the same. Yeah, yeah. But I think the def definitely. The advances in technology definitely have made a big impact on That's times. The and biggest thing. And uh, yeah, shortened obviously lessening times, gaining more strength. Yeah. So yeah, which is the, the biggest contributor to times getting better? Is it the athletes getting better or technology getting better, do you think? Uh, I think that nutrition is better. Okay. The advice they get yeah. in terms of obviously the team around them, you know, psychologists, Oh, um, yeah. masseurs, mm. chiropractors, mm. that never existed before. Like, I've got a pain no. in my back, okay, continue. There was no, you know, that, that information wasn't there. Oh, yeah, you yeah. My point. You know, now it's all there, so of course you can improve athlete performance mm. just by small General attention to details. And, and attention mm. to details, you know, oh. small details, you know, fine tuning. Having a whole team behind you. Having a whole team behind you, yeah, yeah. But yeah. to get to that level, you know, then you need to be obviously very, very talented to get, oh. that, to get that assistance. Nobody gets it. So you yeah. Automatically, you have to have the natural talent. You've got to have the natural talent, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got the natural talent. And, that's the thing. and then you just got to work hard. You work hard, and then obviously, mm. the more harder you work, the, the better you should become. And then obviously, then you get the assistance mm. automatically. And obviously, there's more money in it to, into it now. Mm. Obviously, there's more sponsorship. So that again yeah. helps the athletes. The tracks are better, the shoes are better. 
Mm. So everything, everything assists. And I think actually that you've just touched on a very good point. I was thinking about the other day when it mm. comes to um, the psychology of society and sport participation is that I, I think a lot of younger people need to understand that unfortunately sometimes you don't have the right body type for that specific sport. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it shouldn't discourage you from moving Playing on with it. No, that yeah, 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 and exactly. yeah, 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 try other sports, train exactly. how to use what's around you in a different way. Yeah. Um, I mean, not all of us can be international sprinters. Yeah. Um, yeah. And <laughs> not all of us can have a chest like Daniel. <laughs> 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 but the funny thing, I, I, remember, I remember talking to Ulla about, uh, yeah, last year sometime, and he was obviously, he was telling me what he was getting involved in with all the functional training. And I remember you saying to me, which was, it wasn't surprising because I knew where you were coming from, yeah. but you said to me, uh, that you, if Mike Tyson needed you as a trainer, you could, you could help him become a better fighter. Yeah. And what, what was your reason for saying that? Because I mean, it was quite a bold statement. I knew what yeah, you were coming from. Yeah, it was big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Did I say that? <laughs> I think Mark said that if you wanted to. <laughs> no, but it, uh, I, I've been in this business for 20 years now. Mm -hmm. um, done, done plenty of courses. Met a, a, a huge variety of, of people. And um, yeah. I guess I have the I have the the basic knowledge of of uh, general preparation training, right? And uh, and uh, training for for health and even uh, I uh, of course obviously I can't tell uh, any athlete on a top level how to make their their uh, 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 how to improve their uh, special skills like yeah. Mike Tyson I couldn't tell him how to box better of course no. nothing mm. when it comes to that. but I'm pretty sure that I could help him become a better boxer by changing around maybe what he does for for, for, for mm. general preparation. Right, because I mean, it's the strength yeah. and conditioning side, all that kind of aspect. Yeah. Really. Or yeah. the, just the health side of it, right. you know, you could right. see, I could easily see nine out of 10, the, the, the higher level of the athlete, the worse they are in general, uh, like functional movements, not how they move, how they feel. They always have like a lot of, of bad, bad uh, rehabbed injuries mm. and, and, and they just, Unfortunately, most, most athletes, even today, but especially uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago, they, they did uh, no general uh, preparation mm -hmm. or uh, extremely little and went to, to, to uh, specific training. Mm -hmm. You know, you could see 12, 13 year old hockey players doing explosive uh, jumps mm -hmm. and stuff in the right. gym. And you're like, what? They don't even have muscles, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, yeah. These guys, they, they're not supposed to do, they're supposed to do squats, mm -hmm. right? high repetition squats mm -hmm. for a few years. Mm -hmm. you know? And then they can start mm -hmm. jumping around and, mm -hmm. and build a base. And to, yeah, build a base, you mm -hmm. know? The, the wider your base are, mm -hmm. the top are you, you, the higher you top. Mm -hmm. right? You're too quickly into sport specific. Sport specific yeah. training, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I think, you, especially here in Sweden, we've been, we've been um, Historically, we've been really good at it because we had a, a we had a, a, a general way of looking at it. most athletes been trying a lot of different sports. They've been doing maybe five different sports until they came, became 17, 18 and mm -hmm. they choose today. They have to choose from 10 years old, maybe, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. Hockey, for instance, it takes so, so much money and so much time that uh, that, that uh, parents have to do, do decide if they want to play hockey, they have to stop everything else maybe mm. Mm. at 10 years old. And yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Mm. And, they, and the ambition might be good, but then they start to, they put them in these special courses here. They, they, they have some special physical uh, trainers that come and do some, some sports specific ice hockey training for mm -hmm. them. That's not what they need. Too soon, too soon, too yeah. soon, too soon. And this goes even in, in, in general population. Mm. Every, everybody wants to get so specific, mm. wants to do all this. Yeah, well, what, what's good for me, mm. for you? Probably just what's good for us, you know? <laughs> Squatting, <laughs> deadlifting, you know? Might do some little pressing way. and some yeah. pulling, you know? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. do it in, with a good form. Yeah, that's just come back, yeah. come, come back to the CrossFit thing again. Is people coming to CrossFit too soon? About the, about the preparation? Yeah, well, and well, and even know. if they come into CrossFit, I, I mm. think if you're a really good CrossFit coach, you could coach anybody mm. doing co CrossFit. You can oh, coach yeah. a, a, a woman in a wheelchair doing CrossFit, mm. Mm. but you have to be a good coach. Right, I get right? it. I get it. And that's also the beauty of it, because a top athlete and a beginner can do the same class. You just take it to your level. Yeah, yeah. You take it to your level, exactly. You just exactly. do it in different ways, so... Exactly. so it's really w welcoming mm. to everyone. Yeah. So, um, okay. Yes, but it's it's the matter of, and I think that's the that's uh, 
yeah, that's a that's a big thing. Like we talked about in CrossFit, that that the the coaches are not always no. that, as good as mm. they sh should be. Right. Right. You, know, you take a yeah. mm. they do a, a weekend course, and you mm. could, could actually coach uh, yeah. CrossFit, mm. and you're supposed to coach people doing high repetition Olympic mm. lifting. Mm. Oh, come on, man! Mm. They, uh, mm. Most people consider Takes Olympic lifting uh, top something level. totally different, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> And if you even e to even coach it, it's mm. very hard. Mm. Yeah, I mean, very hard. Anybody mm. that really tried it for real knows that. Exactly. This is yeah. so. Um, yeah, that's a problem, and mm. that's a problem. Uh, is it the same with, pers with personal training? You got personal. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> might be. <laughs> Just <laughs> might be. Yeah, uh, it is. It is uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, even though maybe it, it, it might be more of a acute problem sometimes in CrossFit, but since do you do in uh, classes, you know, you do, you, uh, sometimes a little bit too big classes and you have a high tempo and right, high, yeah, high yeah, intensity high all the time. But yes, yeah, sure, of course, of course, I, I, I have to close my eyes sometimes when I see even personal trainers, how they coach, yeah. you know, and j just the way you say that if you come into a, a, a commercial gym, I have to go in like this. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I did my workout, right? I had to remember. Yeah. Daniel, you're not working out. <laughs> <laughs> probably, I mean, probably half, half uh, of everybody in there shouldn't even be in there. Yeah. They shouldn't be doing what they're doing because it's not even, you know, it's sometimes you can say any exercise is a good exercise. Mm. Almost, you yes. know, but yeah. sometimes it's not. Exercise is always good, you mm. know, but yeah. not any exercise for anybody. I understand. And yeah, we have a, we have a we have a, a, a general problem with a, a, a forward head and yes. forward shoulder posture. Mm -hmm. This is like a normal kind of uh, mm -hmm. look in today, and if you look like that, and you don't correct it before you go into the gym, mm. the chance of you looking even worse when mm -hmm. you start to put some Shoot. weight yeah, on yeah, your yeah. body. It's uh, I mean you don't have to be a mathematic yeah. to understand yeah. that. Yeah. You know? and and yeah, that is a, that is a huge problem. You touched on that subject there uh, earlier. Uh, training for health mm. and training for uh, competition or for uh, what you call to optimize. That's mm. two different things. Yeah, it is for sure. Uh, if most people should train for health and then doing like max, it's not really getting as strong mm. as possible in uh. your upper body or mm. do, it's doing all mm. round mm. workouts. And then if you want to be sport specific, want to compete, that's mm. a totally other thing. But that's what a few mm. percent of the population. Mm. Yeah. But I, I, the environment in in fitness in general is the more you do, the harder you do, the mm. better it is, which That's is not always true. Doing no. doing workouts five, six, seven days a week. Mm. People no. chasing <coughs> uh, personal uh, records every um, almost every uh, session. Yeah. every session. It's crazy. And people yeah. who just do sorry, but just do gym workouts, yeah. they live like they're gonna compete. Like <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Taking uh, amounts of supplements they don't need for their mm. level. Uh, they're doing it affects their entire life. Mm. They I can't go out tonight because I got gym tomorrow, but. Are you gonna mm. compete? No, then <laughs> why don't <are> you socialize? <laughs> yeah. Why do you yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, why do you exclude yeah. your social life for going doing workouts? The the, the wholeness have mm -hmm. kind of Holistic. I don't know if it's ever been there, but I think at one there time right it, I think I think it, at one time it was there, but then the explosion of Instagram and Facebook uh, yeah. mm. came into it. Mm. And now it's everyone wants to it's be famous. Disconnection from yourself. Dis exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. I think that's the that's what I that's what I've noticed with a lot of my clients, mm. uh, general everyday clients, yeah. that come to see me is they they almost get amazed that the foot is connected to your calf, <laughs> your calf yeah. is connected to your hamstring, yeah. hamstring yeah, yeah. is connected with, to your back. Mm. Oh right, so what does that mean? <laughs> like, mm. Well that means that your back issues could easily be coming from your foot yeah. because yeah. it's a domino effect. Yeah. Your shoulder hurts, it's oh, because you're stiff in That's amazing, yeah, like, yeah. really. And I, I get dumbfounded that that's yeah. possible that people don't yeah. really <laughs> understand that whole picture. Yeah. But, but like um, we were talking earlier, just before we started, we were talking about the active release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me a bit, bit more about that because I didn't quite get what that meant. Actually. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, active release is essentially when a muscle yeah, a muscle will have two two different forms: mm -hmm. uh, an active form with mm -hmm. you doing it, or a passive form with okay. somebody else doing it. Uh, when when an active release is, uh, occurs, it's essentially putting some pressure onto the soft tissues of the muscle and the f uh, fascia and so forth as mm -hmm. well. Okay. And then by actively getting the person to move their arm or that muscle group, and then putting the pressure in it as we take the arm out. You're contracting the antagonist, okay. and therefore the neuro 
pathway mm -hmm. into the muscles is uh, assisting the muscle to release itself. Okay. A little bit like um, PNF stretching. Okay. All right, uh, all proprioceptive right. neuromuscular okay. facilitation. Okay. Okay. I think I got that right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in a similar way, yeah. uh, especially those who do CrossFit, and I'm sure you've done it mm, quite a bit yeah. yourself, PNF stretching is a huge thing and yeah. uh, it really does help the body. So, it's a, it's a bit like a, uh, another person assisting mm. with that. Okay. PNF stretching, yeah. um, but essentially, yeah, it's the it's the active pulling of the fibers away, okay. holding that position, okay. because then your antagonist on the opposite side yeah. is is going to be contracted in. So okay. this must remain okay. at an extension. Uh, and, and this is useful for, for, for everybody, or uh, sports people, or it, it mainly is. It works best with sports people. Oh, right, oh, right. But uh, what I've noticed in doing a lot of office-based massages yeah. is that the repetition of office work right. yeah, yeah, yeah. is essentially having the same effect on the fascia construction of mm -hmm. the body. So if you're sitting like this yeah, for yeah, eight yeah. hours a day, yeah. your, your fascia lines will be so far forward, mm -hmm. as you're saying, mm. head, neck, it's mm -hmm. the common look today. Mm -hmm. it's it's uh, scary to say, say the least. Uh, and sure. so to, d to do a fascial, an active fascial release mm -hmm. in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. so you'll be getting them to work their lower back muscles, mm -hmm. their, their uh, th thoracics, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pulling the shoulders back, holding neck positions, mm -hmm. whilst activating down the front, mm -hmm. then you're going to get that active release That's through great. the front and then hopefully the neuro uh, reception of the muscles in the back will become a lot stronger. That pathway has more repetition after a while, okay. and then eventually you'll be sitting at the computer like this. Okay. Uh, so yeah, predom predominantly sports, sports reasons yeah. is uh, for the use, but uh, I'm finding a lot more okay. and more with uh, So you, you, in, you incorporate these kind of techniques uh, with your... Almost with every client, every client almost. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, I've read some papers that uh, massage techniques without active participation yeah. by the client uh, is almost a waste of time. Okay. Um, I think that's a bit of an extreme view, yeah, 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 but yeah. Uh, it's I, I understand where they're coming from okay. because you need that active um, brain muscle connection. Mm -hmm. and well, it's still it's still useful time because you still get the oxytocin and the, so the releases of the hormones just by the touch. Oh yeah, yeah, so, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it still has it's an extreme. That was yeah. an extreme view, but uh, <laughs> uh, I like. But for performance, I yeah. guess you could you could you can measure the performance way uh, oh, way easier true. with the with the active release than. Oh, then with yeah. a with a normal massage, which is Absolutely. very you know Absolutely. hard to get yeah. like, real parameters to to uh, because it's more of, of a feel, right? Mm. Yeah. Did, did it feel good? Yeah, it did feel good. Yeah. Yeah. but it's hard to get a, a clinical mm -hmm. uh, exactly. measurement. I mean, I, I've, I've had one of uh, Sweden's um, S SM weightlifters. Uh -huh. uh, she after doing a little bit of uh, glute work mm. with her and doing an active uh, passive release, mm. all of a sudden. Uh, she went out to the gym, did her deadlift, I think it was, and even her coach just said, oh, ha, what, have, what have you done? Mm -hmm. you, you actually, you can pop now, mm -hmm. you can pop. And it was all because of that, mm -hmm. waking yeah, the muscle. She had some massive yeah. trigger points in her glutes and... Uh, um, huh? yeah, she had a few, but it was more that without that active push into oh. that muscle and t uh, tweaking the muscle with her thinking about a certain movement, oh. she just, her brain, muscle connection just yeah, wasn't went there, yet yeah, she yeah. was at a professional level. Oh, yeah. And then we we got that working and boom, I think she added an extra five, six percent onto her oh, weight yeah. without having to train. To get like better <coughs> body control with your... Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, just just think like a, it's a nervous path, pathway is all about electrical signals. Yes. The, the more you spread the nervous pathway, the more electrical signals, the more activation you, mm. you get. That's great. That I, mean, sense, yeah. I know it's a lot with clients I work, especially people who uh, doesn't work out, you're starting to work out. Mm. The, the mind-muscle connection, call it what you want, the body mm. control, it's quite poor mm. yeah. for a lot of people. They mm. don't know how to activate yeah. the right muscle. Mm. If you ask them just to use your shoulder blade, they'll pull oh, yeah. with the entire arm. Yeah. Mm. And this comes down to, as we spoke about earlier, it's all about the base. You know, mm -hmm. it all starts at the age of one, two, three. Yeah. Get the kids out there, get the kids moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get to the age of ten. Don't be sports specific. Mm -hmm. Do do three, four different sports in a year. Yeah. Do it seasonally. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get 
everything involved, you know, right. even yeah. if it's 10 pin bowling, you know, mm -hmm. that's an interesting movement with the spine, with the, yeah, with the arm. Sure. <laughs> doing that is, in my opinion, just as important when you're a young, young person as doing uh, swimming training or athletics. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the thing that, that seems to come out of what we're talking about is that you need the physical training, you need the nutrition training, and you need the recovery. Mm. Without those three working in harmony, yeah. there's, there's something lacking which would affect the other, whatever it is you're yeah. trying to improve mm. upon. Yes. So when I think about the trainers today, whether it's the CrossFit coaches, whether it's the personal trainers, or there's even the sports coaches in, you know, in, the, in the high schools or in the football clubs, wherever it might be, a lot of them lack that, that trilogy, that triangle mm. of, of education or of knowledge. Yes. Uh, I mean, is that the reason why we're seeing so many issues in, in health and society and in too many injuries in say. sports because the coaches are not properly Well, if I look in, into my area, uh, mm. the, the nutritional part, mm. I see a lot of people who are really knowledgeable but in a quite narrow subject. Mm. Right. So they know a lot about this amount and this amount. But you need a the entire picture mm -hmm. to get to, to get that part of the <coughs> the triangle, so yeah. to say, and then the other parts are <coughs> the personal training and and the yeah, I, I, and I see that daily as well as you see people that perform excellent and train uh, four or five, six times a week, mm. but when you look at their recovery, they totally ignore it. Mm. I mm. sleep four hours a night. Mm. You know, it's good for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is it? I mean, not really. And they uh, could probably, you know, get some better sleeping mm. and they can take out two, three uh, sessions a week and get the same results or yeah. even better results, right? right? Yeah. Right. But uh, yeah, everybody's just focusing on what they, they know and what they think they do and really mm. good and just ignore the rest. Mm. I, I usually do, when I, when I lecture, I, I do a, a little schedule, I do I make a table and I, the table have three legs, mm -hmm. you know? On a, on a three leg table, you can't you can't mess around with the mm -hmm. legs. No, you, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. you need all three. Yeah, right? exactly. And they they represent nutrition, mm -hmm. uh, training, and and uh, recovery. Right? And maybe you could you could you could take a little bit off mm -hmm. from one leg. It's gonna start to to uh, well, tilt, balance, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, not yeah. gonna fall over. Uh, uh. Temporary. Yeah, yeah, you know. But if you take out too much on one, it falls exactly. over. Right? Exactly. So the best way is of uh, always having. E equal, equal amount equal. of length yes. on all three legs, but yeah, yeah, eventually you could, you know, have a little here, a little there mm. at, at time, but mm. don't mess around with one too much mm. because it's gonna fall <laughs> over. <laughs> right? mm. That's so really good. That's really good. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes people do. But, but I'm mm. doing fine. I'm I'm uh, <coughs> I'm doing good in the gym. I'm lifting a good amount of weights. Yeah, yeah, but think how good you could be. Exactly, exactly. It would be even better. Exactly, 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 mm. exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the I think the 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 one part that is really uh, people really ignore is the recovery and mm -hmm. that's a mm -hmm. that's not just for for uh, performance and mm -hmm. I think that's general health yes you know mm -hmm. people especially big city people sleep too little mm -hmm. you know eat too poor mm -hmm. you know, do too much bullshit mm -hmm. exercise bullshit mm -hmm. things uh, in between you maybe know? it's a lack of what kind of recovery you do yeah recovery mm -hmm. is not as far as I'm concerned Sometimes, sure, but not always. Recovery isn't like lying in your couch watching TV. No, no, not for Active sure. recovery, taking recovery. walks, yeah, just yeah, getting course. outside, yeah. massage, sleep, massage, massage, yeah. massage sleep, yeah. going yeah. to nature, Yoga, or just take a yeah. walk yeah. around. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. I, I guess uh, for most people, uh, uh, <laughs> exactly. a quick walk or uh, uh, you know just a walk would be better than laying on the couch. Yes, uh, any yeah. any uh, any day, you know, any day. So so yeah. Because today, a lot of people are when they come from work, they have a still sitting. Work office yeah. work. Mm -hmm. They're super tired in the head, but mm -hmm. the body is fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So go for it. Then I just tell them, don't go to gym. Mm -hmm. Go for a walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think I think this is where I see the issue because we've all been grounded in in years of academic knowledge and information research. We looked into the medical research. We looked into the scientific research. We studied our own skill set. Mm. But a lot of the trainers coming into industry today, they don't know getting this. Mm -hmm. So it's all about going into the gym and working out and then forgetting yeah. these two legs we talked about mm. because that's not the focus. It's like mm. go to the gym and work out. I think, I, I think the, the way that I notice the difference, especially cultural difference between mm -hmm. Sweden and Australia, I was telling Ulla just before, before we uh, shot this film, is that uh, when I was growing up, 
uh, in Australia, mm-hmm. we're, we're so dedicated towards being a professional sportsman. Mm. Like, you know, uh, from the age of seven or eight years old, I yeah. want to be that footballer. And uh, we, we would be so engrossed by it mm. that, I mean, I knew what a AC injury mm. was in the shoulder at the age of eight years old. Right. I knew what the PCL ligament, how different that was from the ACL ligament at around mm. the age of 10 because of my favourite footballer mm. who injured his PCL. Right. <laughs> Yet everyone <laughs> and injures their ACL. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we learn about these things and, and we follow in those their footsteps of our idols and our yeah. heroes. Yeah. And uh, I think if, if you do that and grow up in that environment if you're always running around the playground if you're always out having running running races with your friends mm. you sort of you start to live that life mm-hmm. and then when you become you're 18 19 years old and you might want to get into personal training or nutrition or whatever mm. that's where your basis yeah, has yeah, come yeah. from yeah, base. and then and then because you've had so many uh, hopefully not so many injuries but so much mm. so much uh, exposure to little things happening throughout mm. your life you you've already built your base and mm. you move on no mm. i mean we, we talked about it quite a few times about about personal training and personal trainers how the quality isn't 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 so good and how we how we can change that mm. you know and i think that i think that's what's brought the four of us together because yeah. i think we see things in our own working environment that mm. that is lacking in the big picture mm. So I think, I mean, that's, that's, that I think is a key. I see a lot of, mm. I don't like the term wasted potential, but mm. a lot of good trainers, personal trainers, coaches who could be super excellent mm. to just add some mm. more mm. other parts. Okay. All right, man. So, so good chat. Good chat, yeah. man. <laughs> Thanks for coming by. Good to see you. So we're going to catch up again soon. We will. Good Cheers, chat. mate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>